Hello. Welcome to our how to stutter synth. This is one of three synths that you can make with our DIY synth kit. We're going to be following the manual, which can be found on our website at twsu.co. So, let's get started. The breadboard. This is our first component. Take a look at the breadboard. The horizontal rows at the top and at the bottom, which are marked with red and blue, are our power rails. They provide a convenient way to supply components with electricity. The power rails are connected all the way along the edges of the board. On the inside, you have the opposite. So these rails run perpendicular to the ones on the outside of the boards. They're marked with letters and numbers. So, first of all, we want to connect power to the inside of our breadboard. We're going to use our long red and long black jumper wires. Pop one end in the top right hand corner, just near the positive of your breadboard, and then the other end in the bottom right hand corner, near the other positive. You're going to do the same with the black jumper wire, but in the negative holes. So right underneath your red jumper wire, and then the same on the bottom of your breadboard. Next we come to our second component, our chip or integrated circuit. This is an IC556 timer. It has pins all the way around, and these are numbered one through to seven, and then eight through to 14. The notch is where the one starts. Place the IC over the center of your breadboard, or gutter. It's called a gutter because no power gets through. It's going to form a bridge right over the middle. So if you look at the numbers on the outside of your breadboard, you need to line it up with number 12. 12 at the top, 18 at the bottom, Placing your IC chip in the middle will give you plenty of room to put the other components around it. Now we want to connect the power from the outside rails to the inside of the board. This time you'll want your small black and small red jumper wire. Take your red jumper wire and line it up with pin 14 of your chip, which is also row number 12. This wants to connect to the positive rail on the outside. Next, we're going to connect our ground or negative. So line this up with pin seven, which is also number 18. Pop one leg in number 18 and the other into one of the center negative rows. Step number three, connecting the pins. For this, you'll need your three yellow jumper wires, a medium length one and two short ones. Take the shorter ones and we're going to connect eight and 12 of your IC chip, and then number two to number six of your IC chip. We're still going to use the numbers on the outside to help. So place one leg of a yellow jumper wire into row 18, which is number eight, and the other leg in next to leg number 12, which is row 14. Take your other yellow jumper wire to connect pin two to pin six, pop one leg in row 13, and the other leg into row 17. Now, use the longer yellow jumper wire to connect pin 5 of the IC chip to pin 10. You're going to bridge right across the middle. So, one leg in row 16 and the other leg in row 16 as well, straight across the middle. Next, we're on to our resistors. Resistors aren't polarised, so they can be put into your circuit any way round. Take your 1K resistor. This one is marked brown, black, red, with gold at the end. Bend the legs so it's easy to put into your circuit. Then you want to attach this into the top of your board. So one set of squares in, top right to be in the positive rail. And then you want to connect this to leg number one of your IC chip. Then take your 4.7K resistor. This is marked yellow, purple, red, gold. The bands on your resistors let you know the resistance. This one you'll want to connect to pin 13 of your IC chip. So go for your center block from your positive into the board. The next component you'll need is your ceramic capacitor. There are two types of capacitors. The other ones we'll do later. They're the black ones. 
These ones are not polarized. You can tell because their legs are the same length. You want to connect, simply pop one in the bottom ground rail, pop the other leg into row 14, or make sure it's connecting pin 12 of your IC. The next type of capacitor you'll find in your kit are electrolytic capacitors. These ones are polarized. Looking at the length of the leg, you'll see that one leg is longer than the other. This is the positive leg. It's important which way these go in the circuit. These ones also have different values. We have our 10 UF capacitor and our 100 UF capacitor. So the 100 UF capacitor wants to be near the top of your board, near this little black jumper wire. Line the negative leg up with the negative rail and pop that in the outside and then you want to connect this to pin 6 of your IC chip which is row 17. Then we have our 10 UF capacitor. It's the thinner one. Take the positive leg of the 10 UF capacitor and connect it to pin 9 of your IC chip. Then place a negative leg a few rows along in your board. Component number 7. We're on to our potentiometers. You don't need your 2K2 potentiometer for your other kit for the stutter synth. You'll only need your 470K potentiometers. You can see it's 470K because it's written at the bottom. To attach the potentiometer, we're going to need more jumper wires. This time we're going to take one gray medium length jumper wire and one blue medium length jumper wire. The gray jumper wire is used to connect pin two of your IC chip to row five of the breadboard. Pop one leg in row five. This is also in column C, if that helps. And connect it to pin two in a straight line. Then take your blue jumper wire and connect pin one of your IC to row three, following column D in a nice straight line. Now, take your first 470K potentiometer and place it on the board with the shaft facing outwards. Make sure that the right hand and middle legs line up with the end of the gray wire and end of the blue wire in your board. This means the middle one should line up with row three and the right hand one should line up with row five. Now we're going to connect your second 470K potentiometer. Again, we'll need more jumper wires. Take one blue jumper wire and one brown jumper wire. The blue jumper wire is going to connect pin 12 of your IC to row five of your board. This should be in a straight line down column eight. Now take your brown jumper wire and use it to connect pin 13 to row three. And this is in a straight line down column I. Then take your 470K potentiometer and make sure that the middle pin and the right hand pin line up with the end of the blue wire and the end of the brown wire on your board in holes one, three and five. The next component you're going to need is your button. This will help turn your stutter synth on and off. At the top, it has a switch, and at the bottom, it has four legs. Place the button over the central gutter, the gap in the middle of your breadboard, just underneath the IC chip, with one space in between, like so. Take your speaker with its prepared wires. You want to connect this to your power switch and to the bottom ground rail of your breadboard. So, one, leg one wire just inside if it twists off again as you're putting it in just keep twisting so your wires are nice and compact together so push that in to column g just next to your little switch there and then pop the other one into basically the second one in bottom right hand corner of your ground rails the next thing you'll need to attach is your battery clip. This is a nine volt battery clip and it will take the power into your circuit. So you want to be in this little top right hand box of your breadboard. Pop the red wire into the same rail as your red jumper wire and then the black wire into the same rail as your black jumper wire. Now it's time to test our circuit. So attach your nine volt battery to the clip Press your start button. Take your acrylic, peel off the back of your breadboard and stick it on top of your acrylic. Then take your battery clip wires and feed them back through the small hole in your acrylic casing and pop the wires back in the holes they once were in. Then our speaker wants to go the other way around. So our speaker itself sits on top of the board into its hole. Feed the wires back through the small hole 
and then pop them back into their rightful places. Pull those through nicely so they're nice and neat. Then we take the box that this came in. It comes with a little tab of acrylic which sits at the bottom of your battery and that can be glued in the bottom of your case. Then we take our sellotape. I've cut mine in half so it's easier to do. And we're going to stick this in each corner, line it up and your synth case is complete. we have it, our DIY stutter synth. I feel changed somehow. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and for more synth projects and others please do go to twsu.co. Feel free to leave any comments below and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter with the hashtag Future Inventors.